me say good morning to everyone and thank you all for being uh, present here this morning. I certainly want to um, let me acknowledge uh, a few people at the very at the very beginning. Uh, Commissioner Laura Ryan from TechStock, good to be with you this morning. Uh, the Deputy Executive Director for Planning and Administration at TechStock, Brandy Hendrickson. Uh, Elijah Paul is with TechStock, is also present. Um, let me acknowledge uh, Commissioner Adrian Garcia, uh, Precinct 2, Commissioner Rodney Ellis, Precinct 1 with Harris County, and uh, Christian Menifee, the County Attorney, this morning. Uh, State Senator Boris Miles is with us this morning. Uh, also, City Council at large, David Robinson is also present, and uh, uh, City Council member Carla Cisneros is present. Uh, Europa Harris is representing Congresswoman Sheila J uh, Jackson Lee. Uh, we have also the president of University of Houston downtown campus, uh, President Blanchard is also present. Uh, Justin Robinson of the Houston area Urban League. So there are a number of people who are present. Uh, Chris Law. <laughs> Chris Lawson from downtown central Houston is present. Many directors, um, Michael Heckman of Houston First, and the list goes on and on. I'll be here all day. Okay, let me just say thank all of you uh, for, for, being, for being here this morning. Um, look, this is the way we're going to proceed. Uh, I'm gonna make a few comments. I'll be followed by County Commissioner Adrian Garcia and County Commissioner Rodney Ellis, uh, followed by County Attorney uh, Christian Menifee. After that, you will hear from Commissioner Ryan from TechStock and then Brandy, Brandy Hendrickson, who is the Executive Director uh, for Planning and Administration uh, for TechStock. And then following that will be Sanjay Ryan, uh, the Chair of Metro. Where is Sanjay? Yeah, yeah Sanjay. Uh, Sanjay will close us out. Uh, let me just say there's been a lot of work on the North Houston Highway Improvement Project over the last uh, several years. A lot of community engagement and input. I know I appointed uh, several people uh, about three years ago uh, to the Mayor's Task Force on I-45 North, um, and the work continued until we reached an impasse. Uh, Harris County filed a lawsuit on this matter. Complaints were made to the Federal Highway Administration. Several draft MOUs were presented, and the project simply stalled. Uh, meanwhile, the cost balloon on this project, some would say from $7.5 billion, and now it may be estimated to be in excess of $9 billion. In its current state, and I always, I've always said in its current state, I-45 is unsafe, it floods, um, and it doesn't meet our mo mobility needs. For someone, for example, who lives on the north side, uh, like I do, grew up on the north side, um, I-45, if it rains a great deal, right there at North Main and I-45, it will turn into a lake. And for those of us who remember Tropical Storm Imelda, uh, that is exactly what happened. And then if you get down to I-45, Cross Timbers, Tidwell, Little York, uh, those feeders are simply impassable. Uh, so in this current state, it doesn't meet our flooding needs, our mobility needs uh, at all. But I have said, and I believe this project could be transformative for the region, uh, and the city of Houston if it was done right. And then I underscore that. It, it can be transformative, uh, but it must be done right. Uh, today we are here to announce that the city and county uh, have reached agreements uh, with Techstar. Um, and today I will sign uh, the MOU for the city of Houston that has already been signed by Mark Williams, the executive director of Techstar. Uh, the city's MOU in combination with the Harris County MOU, uh, I believe will make this project transformational uh, for, the region, for the region. And in fact, I think with the combination of the MOUs, I think we have made significant progress than when this project uh, started. And let me speak about the city's MOU, uh, which Mark Williams has signed on behalf of TechStock, uh, and then I will defer to the county to speak specifically about uh, theirs. The city's MOU focuses on six areas. Um, one is housing. Uh, TechStock is committing to uh, comparable housing within, their, within people's um, community, compensation for relocation to replace units at Clayton and Kelly. And in addition, TechStock will make available an additional $30 million for other affordable housing to increase annually based on the CPI, starting with the signing of this agreement. 
Uh, TxDOG is committing to enhance relocation services, supplemental assistance, tenter rental assistance up to 42 months. And the bottom line is that TxDOG is committing to net zero housing loss for public housing unit. Uh, that was a critical component uh, for all of us, and I think it, is, um, it gives uh, greater uh, satisfaction to know that people can stay within their own respective communities. And this includes not just people who own their property, but people who are tenants as well, uh, with rental assistance going up to 42 months. The second area deals with drainage and flooding, uh, working with tax stock. Uh, tax stock will use the new Atlas 14 rainfall data in its design. Uh, they are committing to new pump stations, new detention ponds, and in some cases, converting existing culverts with bridges. Uh, they are agreeing to partner with local governments and agencies on the North Canal project, which is a major project. I know our hazard mitigation grant funding project, uh, that is a major one. And then in their design to look at flood levels of 500 year events. Uh, the third ar area deals with limiting the footprint on this project. Uh, and Tech Stock, uh, working with our local units of government, is agreeing to take only what is needed as this project. Uh, moves forward, this will require continuous engagement uh, with all of the local partners as we move as we move forward. I should say from the very beginning that the MOU applies to all three segments, segments one, two, and three. With regards to transit, which is the fourth component, uh, Sanjay Ram will speak more specifically uh, to this, but let me just highlight just a few things. Um, in this agreement, the MOU, is that this project must be compatible with our transit infrastructure. Uh, the max lanes, it includes max lanes, two-way, 24 hours, seven week days a week operations uh, to include high occupancy vehicles like BRTs. And what was critically important, I think, for all of us is that once this project is designed and built, no one wanted to come back to reconstruct or modify in order to make sure that it uh, was compatible with BRTs, which means from the very beginning, the design will be included, so no reconstruction or modification uh, will be needed. The fifth item deals with connectivity of streets and neighborhoods. Uh, within the MOU, there are specific examples of local street connections, which will enhance neighborhood con connectivity, and those are specifically outlined uh, in the MOU. But for example, Andrew Street and Fourth Ward, Freemanstown, Hamilton Street, uh, Lamar, McKinney, Walker Streets, uh, all are working to make sure that we have connectivity uh, with, our, with our existing neighborhoods. Um, that was a critical area. And then the sixth element deals with parks and open spaces and open green spaces. Uh, there will be no negative impact to our existing parks. Uh, Tech is agreeing to coordinate with local groups, uh, for example, for drainage retention where open spaces are involved. They will work with community groups to identify secondary open public spaces for detention where possible. Uh, they will design highway components uh, where elements of visual, where the highway elements visibly uh, recede and the green landscape is more prominent. It was important that the highway not become the central focus, so to speak, uh, but that we highlight the importance of green space even in terms of a visual presentation. Uh, tech stock is agreeing to work to create more recreational spaces and more trail connections, for example, along the banks of Buffalo Bayou, Bayou, White Oak, Little White Oak, and Halls Bayou, and including the Emancipation Trail as well. And then tech stock is agreeing to provide even more green space, for example, the highway caps, on, for example, on North Main, the east side of the convention center, and third ward along the 288 sophomore and Cleburne. Let me quickly add that when you, can, you must take these two MOUs together because I salute the county because in their MOU, they specifically talk and delineate even more with respect to the caps uh, that will be established uh, through the construction of this project. The North Houston Highway Improvement Project is one of the largest infrastructure projects the city of Houston will see in a generation, and it's worth making sure that the plan works best for everyone who lives here. I will quickly say that there is no perfect design, 
and it doesn't say that everyone will be pleased. But on balance, uh, with the improvements, with the combination of memorandum from the city, uh, combined with the memorandum of understanding from the county, I think you have an excellent project that will move forward that will benefit the greater good of the Houston community, Harris County, and the region. This project will help move people by all modes, being designed for driving, transit, walking, and commissioning elders and biking. It will create added green space while seeking to minimize any adverse impacts on existing green space. It will address long-time flooding issues, invest and minimize negative impacts on historic neighborhoods uh, like uh, Tanya DeBose, like Independent Hikes. It will provide resources for Houstonians to stay in their neighborhoods. And Harris County has been a critical partner. And let me underscore that. Harris County has been a critical partner in getting us to this point. Their active involvement, engagement, litigation have helped to produce a result that will benefit generations to come. And so I want to give a special thanks to Commissioner Adrian Garcia, to Commissioner Rodney Ellis, uh, to County Attorney Kristen Menifee, in which I've had many, many, many conversations, um, way too many, uh, with Kristen, with Kristen Menifee. Uh, but I want to thank him for his engagement. Uh, no one um, can move this project alone. And so let me also thank uh, TxDOT Commissioner Laura Ryan. Uh, we've had many conversations over the last two plus years. Uh, to Mark Williams, the Executive Director, uh, there have been several conversations. And to many of the people in this community uh, where there have been a lot, a lot, a lot of conversations. Some nice, not some not so nice. Uh, some poignant and some uh, where they ended with friends uh, becoming less friendly. But nonetheless, uh, we find ourselves at this point. Let me thank the members of city council who I know feel very, very passionately about this project. Uh, council member Carlos Cisneros, I know you're concerned with parks and green space and connectivity. Councilmember David Robinson on the infrastructure and how it works and whether or not it's transformative. Councilmember Carolyn Evans Shabazz on how it will impact that third ward community and many other council members who are not here as well. But I conclude by saying um, on balance, when you add the work that's been done, uh, Senator Ellis, uh, Senator Ellis, Senator Boris Miles, uh, I personally believe that this is a project that should move forward in the benefit of the city of Houston, Harris County, and the greater region. And I'm glad we're able to come to this point at this time as we prepare to close out in 22, looking forward to 23 and beyond. Having said that, now let me yield uh, to County Commissioner Adrian Garcia.